Indeed, the government of Zimbabwe has a legal obligation to protect and promote human rights, and it extends to ensuring that people realize their rights without discrimination. This obligation has two dimensions, the external and the internal. The external dimension of the obligation is to promote and protect human rights and revolves around norm setting. The government therefore plays the role of developing human rights standards. Institutions, and you already spoke about the establishment of institutions, and supervisory mechanisms by bringing attention to human rights violations at international and regional fora, such as the United Nations as well as the African Union. We welcome the government's recent invitation to the UN Special Rapporteur on Rights to Freedom of Peaceful Assembly and of Association, Mr. Clement Nyalechotsi Vole, who visited Zimbabwe from the 17th to the 27th of September 2019. At the end of his visit, the UN Special Rapporteur released preliminary findings following his 10-day visit to Zimbabwe. He raised strong concerns about incidents of state-perpetrated violence. And um, I think basically we are talking about state-perpetrated violence um, as has been happening recently. Um, we are not referring to what was happening in the previous regime. And I quote, he said, in cases where there have been human rights violations committed by police or the military, including in instances of excess use of force, it is vital that perpetrators are held accountable. Uh, Vole said, to foster impunity is to foster distrust among the population, alienating them from the government and quashing their hopes of meaningful change in the future, end quote. We therefore urge the government to take positively the preliminary observations of the special rapporteur and work towards ensuring that we enjoy the rights he superintends over. After the August 1 shootings, Minister, um, the Motlante Commission was commissioned, and I think a number of speakers have already spoken to that. And um, I think as civil society, we are really worried that with the raft of recommendations that were put in the report, it seems that there is a lot of stalling of the process. And it might just assist in terms of that process being, um, being moved forward. And since January of this year, as CSOs, we have recorded at least 67 cases of alleged abductions. These abductions are a clear contravention of constitutionally guaranteed rights, in particular Section 49, which provides for the right to personal liberty, which includes the right not to be deprived of one's liberty arbitrarily and without just cause. We have also been concerned about the targeting of civil society actors, arbitrary arrests, and increases of the number of people who have been charged with subverting a constitutionally elected government. We are also concerned about the increases in the incidences of torture that citizens are experiencing. Um, we have also noted an increase in CSOs and trade union leaders allegedly receiving threats of intimidation. This is another direct violation of the right to personal security, which is protected in Section 52 of the Constitution. Section 59 of the Constitution guarantees citizens' right to peacefully demonstrate and petition. As CSOs, we have recorded an increase in incidences in which this right has been deprived. There should not be any in inhibition for calling for demonstrations in a bid to claim recognition of basic and fundamental human rights. Yet in January 2019, during the demonstrations which were triggered by an announcement in the price of fuel, 
we witnessed overnight drug net arrests, shootings, and mass beatings, as well as sexual assaults. The government plays a critical role in the protection of human rights in that it must prevent private actors from violating the rights of others or interfering with others' enjoyment of their rights. As CSOs, we have had statements to the effect that um, there is in existence a third force. We call upon the government to play its role by prosecuting the members of the said third force and those responsible for human rights violations in our jurisdiction. <laughs> the government must have mechanisms that can be used to report human rights violations, and these mechanisms must be competent to investigate the allegations transparently. There is also a need for human rights violations to be investigated regardless of the status of the alleged perpetrator. In conclusion, the Zimbabwe government plays a vital role in the protection of human rights, both in its jurisdiction and in the international community. In playing its role of protecting human rights, the state must create awareness of human rights to avoid the occurrence of human rights abuses. Further to this, the Zimbabwean government must put in place measures to deal effectively with cases of human rights violations to ensure non-recurrence. Um, I might also want to add that uh, we are ready partners, uh, Minister, um, as we go about our mandate uh, in terms of looking to ensure that citizens have their rights respected. And uh, I hope that what you said in terms of the government not being able to do this on its own, we are ready to be able to work as we also discharge our mandate. I thank you. Thank you very much.